Today is September 14th, 2022, and both GoPro and DJI both released their new action cameras. I personally like the modular design, and I also have the Action 1, so if I ever wanted the other GoPro style, I could still use that camera for that. Now, there are a couple new features with the Action 3, but for me, those aren't enough for me to upgrade. I'm just going to compare the Action 2 to the Action 3 spec because those are the two that are available right now. They don't make the Action 1 anymore. So I'm going to go through the specs comparing them side by side. Now they both have magnetic mounts. I believe they are different though. So I don't think the Action 2 mounts will work on the Action 3 but I have not had that confirmed yet. Now if I didn't have any Action Cam I'd go with the Action 3 for sure. But like I said considering I have the Action 1 and Action 2 um, I pretty much have most of the features. Um, there have been some subtle updates, but for what I use the action camera for, which is mainly biking or if I want to do a super light vlogging kit, um, the action 2 is more than enough and the action 1, I have the underwater case. So if I ever go underwater, I actually use that for any underwater shots as the action 1. The action 3 does have invisible selfie stick. Which is definitely a neat feature, but for me, I'm just using a small stick. And this is arm's length, so I don't really use a selfie stick. So it doesn't really help me at all. First is the weight. The Action 2 is 120 grams. The Action 3 is 145 grams. Pretty close, but still a little bit lighter for the Action 2. Secondly, the field of view, the sensor, and the aperture are all the same between the Action 2 and the Action 3. So the Action 2 and the Action 3 have the same size sensor, which is over 1 over 1.7 inch sensor. Um, it does have 10 bit on the Action 3, but for, which is great for color grading. But I, I use the standard, what comes out of the camera, and do all my editing and post it from there. So some of the benefits of the Action 3 is much longer battery life. So both the Action 2 and the Action 3 have horizontal leveling, rock steady. Action 3 has rock steady 3, action 2 has rock steady 2. Both can shoot both horizontal and vertical videos. So if you want to do YouTube shorts or TikTok, the DJI Action 2 has four microphones. If you have the second display module, the Action 3 has three microphones. Now supposedly the Action 3 is supposed to do a little bit better with wind. The back screen on the Action 3 is LED and the back screen on the Action 2 is OLED. I don't know how much difference you'd see in direct sunlight, but even with sunglasses I can see the screen on the Action 2. The back screen on the Action 3 is 2.25 inches and on the Action it is 1.79. So it is bigger on the Action 3. For both video and photos, the Action 2 has an ISO range of 100 to 6400 and the Action 3 has an ISO range of 100 to 12800. I don't know what the noise introduction will be. The shutter speed max is 1 over 8000 on both the Action 2 and the Action 3. The frame rates that are available are the same on the Action 2 and the Action 3 and I'm going to list them on the screen here because it'll just be easier because it's 4K is different than HD which is different than 2.8 so I'll have those scroll across the screen. For time lapse and hyper lapse and slow motion all the available frame rates for each of the video resolutions are the same between the Action 2 and the Action 3 so there's no difference there. The max video rate is both 130 for both the Action 2 and the Action 3. Both shoot JPEG and RAW. Both are MP4 and H.264 video format. Both are micro SD cards and can take a maximum card size of 256 gigabytes. Rocksteady 3.0, but like I said, I really don't, one and two are really good as it is, so I mean, any improvement's worth it, but I wouldn't do it just for the upgrade of that. There's the invisible selfie stick. The temperature that it can run at is about 20 degrees Celsius colder so it can actually do more extreme cold. One feature the Action 3 does have is fast charging, where it could do 80% of the battery, I believe it was in 20 minutes. You can probably get about an hour and a half at about 20 minutes charge, where the Action 2 and Action 1 have regular standard charging. One other thing that's nice on the Action 3, like the Action 1, is you could save your presets. So you can kind of go out and it just has a quick change button. 
So you can go between your different video modes that you preset and save, go back to photo, go back to time lapse. You don't have to worry that you got all the settings right when you switch between any of those. So that's kind of a nice feature on both the Action 1 and the Action 3. The Action 2 had a 10 meter waterproofing on just the top module, not the bottom one, just the top is waterproof. And it's 16 meters on the Action 3. Another benefit of the Action 3 is that it's completely waterproof to the 16 meters, where like I said, the Action 2, only the top module is, and that has only 22 gigabytes of usable storage space. So you definitely de need an underwater case, just because then you can have the either the battery module or the second screen go underwater then if you buy the waterproof kit. So again, nothing against the Action 3, but for me, I think the Action 2 is definitely enough for me, especially the prices are pretty comparable right now. Actually, I think they're identical at 329 USD as of today. So it kind of depends what you want. One of the other advantages though of the Action 2 is they have the magnetic lanyard so you can actually mount it underneath your shirt, put the magnet on the outside, and just have it shoot completely hands-free if you want to do a point of view that way. So each have their pluses and minuses, but at this point, considering the image quality is nearly, if not identical, I think I'm just going to stick with the Action 2 for now. So that concludes the Action 2 versus Action 3. Strictly my opinion depending on what you have, what you want it to do, if any of the new features are beneficial to you, the Action 3 might definitely be worth it. But the same price, so might even just be down to form factor, is how you determine which one you're gonna get. Can't go wrong really with either one. They're both uh, really decent cameras for both action and even just for vlogging. You know, you can use them both for that. You can mount them to a bike, skiing, kayaking, whatever you want. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, click the like button, click subscribe if you want to see more content like this.